Well, that was wonderful. Yes! This is our last show of a very long tour. Are you ready for 15 minutes of video excitement? Yeah. Excellent. Does someone have any espresso that I could have? <laughs> One or eight. All right, my friends, how many of you have shot video that you've uploaded to, say, Vine? Vine videos. Don't be shy. How many of you have shot some video with your mobile device? Excellent. And how many of you have uploaded videos to things like Instagram? Well, welcome to the 2014 release of Creative Cloud for Video, because there are very exciting new features in here which really deal with simplifying, uh, improving, and allowing you to be uh, a better editor. But really, even if you're not an editor, get into these applications and do some very cool things very quickly, very efficiently, and really improve productivity. And while that sounds like sales and marketing, and if any of you saw our keynote in New York, I said it does indeed sound like sales and marketing, and it is. It's true. <laughs> you dig? All right. I said it's the last one, so, you know. All right, so broadcast graphics. What you see here is we have some video, and over top of that video, we have a lower third, a lower third that was created in After Effects. And we heard from editors all over the world that this is a very common scenario where they will edit their video and often the graphics packages are given to them. And if they need to make a simple modification like changing the name of the person or the location where they are, etc., their role in this particular piece, they would go into After Effects and then they're sort of staring at this interface with a very large multi-layered composition and in many cases, After Effects comps can be very complex, just like Photoshop files, right? You can have nested comps. You can have the text could be layers down inside of a nested comp. And editors are saying, I just don't feel comfortable editing these elements. What if I make a mistake? What if I disable the animation? What if I change it inappropriately? Can't you just put this inside of Premiere Pro? So a common theme of the 2014 release of Creative Cloud is that we're taking technologies from one application and placing them in another. And in this case, we have something called live text templates, where if I go ahead and select this here, what you're actually seeing, this is in fact the After Effects project, not just a rendered file. This is the AEP. This is the After Effects project dynamically linked directly into Premiere Pro. So for instance, if I wanted to say she's not actually from Tokyo, she's from Osaka, I can simply type it and it changes. If I said, no, her name is not Mari, it's Mary with a Y, boom, I can simply implement that and it changes. If I say that, well, her last name is not Yamamoto, maybe it's, well, we'll just leave it at Yamamoto for now, um, we can make these changes and you'll get the idea. Now, before we go on any further, how you set up these particular uh, live text templates is simply by making a change to the composition settings in After Effects. Now, this is not something the editor would have to do. This is something that your VFX person would do, and it's a simple checkbox that you see here, this template checkbox. And as you can read, when it's checked, only template compositions in the project will be visible to Premiere Pro. Now, again, um, the idea here being that they can lock down layers. They can actually prevent you from editing things that don't need to be edited. And once they allow these particular layers to be editable, they'll show up directly inside of Premiere. You can make your changes. They apply instantly there. I've just turned it back into an eye there. Again, we can put this back to Tokyo. You never have to leave Premiere Pro. Let's go ahead and spell this correctly like that. Okay. <laughs> There's your change, just like that, taking technology from After Effects, putting inside of Premiere, really speeding up productivity. Can you feel it, London? <laughs> They're feeling it all in the front row. <sighs> I just turned 40 last Saturday. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Thank <laughs> you. You said, give it all, my friend. So continuing on, <laughs> masking and tracking. Now, why do we mask? Of course, anyone in design knows that we mask for a variety of reasons. Now, in video, we might mask or create a mask around a person for color correction purposes. Or, for instance, if we're doing interviews, we may mask out someone's face and blur it to conceal their identity. 
Or perhaps if we're filming something for a live broadcast or TV show or even a commercial television show, if they don't have license to show a particular logo, they might mask or blur it out or sometimes just put a piece of tape over it. But again, masking is very common. Now, while you were able to mask in Premiere Pro in the past, it wasn't really elegant. And if you needed to move that mask around, it was a very manual, key-framed process. So we wanted to remove that pain of doing all of that. Now, in the October 2013 release of Creative Cloud for After Effects, we introduced something called the Rigid Mask Tracker. And rather than reinvent a masking and tracking engine, we simply took that technology from After Effects, and it now lives directly inside of Premiere Pro. So if I go ahead and select, this is our shot of uh, the wild leaves that you saw in some of uh, Michael and Rufus's demos. Let me come over to Effects, and let's go ahead and add our Fast Color Corrector. And now what you'll see is that on the Fast Color Corrector, but more importantly, on every effect inside of Premiere Pro CC 2014, you now have the ability right on canvas within the effect to create an ellipse mask or a four-point polygon mask. So let's go ahead and choose this ellipse mask. And I'm going to drag this out like this. Now the camera happens to be panning a bit left to right here. We're not going to worry about that. I simply just want to use this in a color correction kind of way, just to brighten up, maybe readjust the levels here, and draw more focus to the band. OK? So let's come down to our settings of the fast color corrector. Let's go ahead and brighten this up just a little bit. And then we'll increase the saturation like this. All right, And as you might expect, of course, if I click away from that, you're going to have this nice <laughs> ellipse-looking hole there, which we don't want. So you might say, well, surely you could feather those edges. And of course, we allow mask feathering. So let's go ahead and feather that to around 200%. And now, if we go ahead and play this back, you can see that we have our little color-corrected section. Now, if I go ahead and wind this back, I can turn it off. I can turn it on. You can actually see what this is doing in real time. And you'll notice that even though this is 4K red footage, R3D, playing on my laptop off of an external drive natively without transcoding, playback never stops. OK. <laughs> I almost blew my throat out right there. I was going to do an Ian Gillen, and I don't do that. All right. All right. Now that's fine. That's easy. That's simple. But what about when you actually have something or someone who is moving? And this is one of my favorite shots. These guys in Sonic are so cool. Their music's awesome. They're from New York. Um, and I love this shot because so here we have this hat. It's uh, representing a brand called Rad. And we didn't have license to show this. So we need to mask and track it. But this guy, he's all over the place. And what I love is look at, look at his, the dude on the left. He's, he's like totally still. But he's, he's, and the other guy is just, yeah, whatever. So now we're going to use a blur. So let's go up to effects. We have my fast blur here. You can drag or double click that, however you choose. <clears throat> and for this one, I think I'm going to use the four point polygon mask. So let's go ahead and drag this over to our gentleman's hat. It is kind of funny. Thank you, sir. And We'll come over here, and let me just go ahead and make this a little bit bigger so I can see what I'm doing, because as I mentioned, I did turn 40, and it's kind of hard to see now. So uh, let's go ahead and make this adjustment like this. Now, many of you may be thinking, well, you could do this in Premiere Pro before. True! But when it came time to actually animating the mask, how did you do it? How you say? Frame by frame. Not fun. Not good not terribly accurate, and very time consuming. So once again, we took the rigid mask tracker from After Effects, placed it inside of Premiere Pro, along with all of its various options, and now, right in Premiere, right on the clip, right on canvas, I can simply track the motion as it happens, just like that. Don't hold back, London! Make me feel it! That was fantastic. I'm not like this all the time. <laughs> OK. Now, oh, did my, my timer stopped. OK, well, I only have five minutes, I'm pretty sure. So we'll just back that up. All right, so 
for my last number, <laughs> uh, I want to talk to you once again about some really amazing things that we've done for color grading. And again, trying to remove, trying to eliminate some of the pain of rendering. And this has been a process which we, we started several versions ago, right, via dynamic link. This is what you just saw with live text templates. Oh, and oh, and even before I get there, hold on, let me just re rewind myself for a second. <laughs> After you make the changes to the mask on your clip, you have the ability to replace this with an After Effects composition because as Adobe users, you want complete control. So I can send this over to After Effects and now you can see from the Premiere Pro timeline, we have the mask as you saw it in Premiere, we have the fast blur as you saw it in Premiere, and now you have all the capabilities of After Effects to make changes to that. Okay, but back to color grading. This was a process that was very render intensive, right? So you can see we have the timeline here, and if we wanted to make, uh, to grade this, right? And color grading, for those of you who have not done grading or not totally familiar with it, how many of you use Lightroom? Okay, so Lightroom, we do color correction for stills. Grading is color grading 25 stills per second, or in film, 24 frames per second, okay? Grading, color correction, same thing. One is over time, one is on a single frame. You'd have to render this out. You'd have to take this entire movie that you see here, which is a mixture of 4K, 5K, 6K footage. And I want to emphasize that Premiere Pro, Speed Grade, we are resolution independent. So you can shoot in these ultra HD, extremely large sizes, take that footage, drop it in the timeline, and just go. That's it. That's the beauty of this CC video system. But it always involved rendering for color grading, but not anymore. So taking a tip from dynamic link, we now are introducing direct link to speed grade. So right from the Premiere Pro timeline, I can choose to direct link to Adobe speed grade. Go ahead and send it over there. Grab some, that's somebody else's water. Grab a water, it will launch speed grade. And what you're now actually seeing this is the Premiere Pro timeline playing inside of SpeedGrade. Transitions that you have playing inside of SpeedGrade. Any color correction, adjustment layers, even the actual colors of the particular labels of the tracks themselves, of the video clips themselves. This is the Premiere Pro timeline in SpeedGrade. So now all you have to do is do your color correction. Now, there's lots of options here. I don't have uh, enough time to show all of them to you. I want to point out a couple of very important things that are part of this release that, again, whether you're shooting 4K, 5K, 6K, or you're shooting with a DSLR, or your mobile device, or some other version of digital camera, is that we have lots of looks, lots of presets. And again, for those of you familiar with Lightroom, we have all those lovely presets. Do we like presets? Yeah, we like presets! Yeah! yeah that's right, thank you. That's enough. <laughs> What's happening to me? 40. 40. We like presets because presets allow us to get started, right? They inspire us to learn, ah, oh, this is how we get this kind of look, this kind of feel, this kind of contrast. So it's a good starting point. So we've added dozens of new looks presets in SpeedGrade to help you get started. We've also added new camera patches. And I see a couple of my good friends in the audience here who know a thing or two about shooting on multiple cameras, including DSLRs, RED cameras, ARRI cameras, Blackmagic Cinema cameras, GoPro cameras. When you deal with mixed cameras, you have a problem with making them all look kind of the same, right? Because they all have different color profiles. So with these camera patches, and you can kind of see some of the names down here, 5D, 7D, 1DC, Blackmagic, RAW, Cinema Camera, C300, Nikon D800, GoPro, Arri, Alexa. This gives you a, a starting point to basically flatten out all of your camera clips so that everything is even from the start, and then you can begin applying the grade. Now, as we take a look here, you're going to notice that we've got a couple clips of our artist here, uh, Jesse Boykins, and if I zoom in, you'll actually see that these are all sourced from the same 3177 clip. These are known as subclips. They came from a larger master clip. And this is a very typical workflow, right? You shoot something, long piece, cut it up into sections, edit it together. In a traditional color grading workflow, we would have to grade each of these clips individually. But now, in SpeedGrade and Premiere Pro, we understand and have a concept 
of master clips. So it knows that these all came from the same source. So now I can simply denote just one of these as coming from a master clip. I can go up to one of my cine looks here, and let's choose something like this gold heat, which applies a very high contrast sort of look to this, very stylized look, and you can see it, it's applied it to all of the instances there. And now if I want to see this back in the context of my edit, just as we had direct link to speed grade, we now have direct link to Adobe Premiere Pro. Go ahead and click on that, click yes, no rendering, goes back to Premiere, just like that, back in the timeline, play it, here it is. <laughs> and if I go ahead and select this, hit the F key, it's going to open up the master clip where you can see it has applied the speed grade Lumetri filter. The Lumetri filter is the engine that provides those looks. So if I turn this off, it, it removes the look from all of the clips, all of those sub clips. Subsequently, if I select it again here, turn it back on, it has now reapplied that look to all of the subclips. So really, my friends, this not only changes the way that you think about grading, but it just saves you an enormous amount of time because you can go back and forth and really do anything that you can possibly think of. We have Typekit support in Premiere and After Effects. We have Cooler support in After Effects. We have the ability to auto-save to the Creative Cloud, your preferences here in Premiere Pro. This is just 15.65% of all of the incredible new features coming to the 2014 release of Creative Cloud for Video. My friends from London, thank you so much. See you next time.